you you went into the hospital for shoulder hey, for shoulder surgery. How's that? I, how's the light? Is that light too much behind me? No, that's okay. We can see you. Okay, cool, we can cool. see you. Listen, you, yeah, you, you, you're good. So you went in for a, an outpatient shoulder surgery, which means you should, you should have went in, had a surgery done, and go home. Yeah. And le more than two weeks later, you're still in the hospital. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> not to be long-winded, like uh, a lot of our viewers have told me before. No, no, no. You, you can. Don't worry about it. No, do your thing. Um, you guys remember when I was at the Arnold Classic, I had a shoulder repair, recovery, right? So um, I was scheduled to have my right shoulder done, but I retore that same shoulder. Um, so they said, well, let's let's go ahead and do your left shoulder. We'll do your right. So I went in and, um, you know, they're uh, getting ready to do the surgery. And uh, from, from the ultrasound, he said, listen, I'm going to just bring some cadaver tissue and bones because it, it looks pretty bad. Um, but long story short, um, the doctor, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Yi, that's my surgeon. He said, man, when I got in there, it looked like a bomb that went off. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, it looked like it's just like an explosion. Uh, so, um, the one hour surgery turned into four hours and, um, and then, you know, just the pain from all that was crazy. So they ended up having to keep me first just because of the pain. Um, but then I got some type of GI uh, infection uh, and I started having like diarrhea for like four days straight and then constipated. So being that, uh, you know, I'm a kidney transplant patient, you know, getting dehydrated is not safe for me, which then triggered my kidney to start uh, uh, having problems. So still having a GI problem, but mostly right now uh, it's a kidney problem because it's really unstable. Now my numbers are super unstable. Uh, so uh, they scheduled me uh, for a uh, kidney biopsy to go in because the kidney is 20 years old. And, mm. um, you know, average kidneys don't last over uh, seven years is the average uh, life for a kidney. Mm. So um, that's my when, donors, you, when you get a kidney transplant, just just just, <clears throat> just to make sure we understand. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you get a kidney transplant and normally for just a normal person only la, um, last about seven years. So my donor was very, very fatigued. And obviously, I'm not the, the smallest guy in the world. So it's a stress for that kidney anyway, because it's so small. Um, but um, so my point is, 20 years is an amazing just for a healthy person with a uh, with a kidney transplant. So, um, you know, the kidney's done its job, but it's showing definitely signs of wear and tear and weakness. So, so they're concerned now that it might start to, uh, like Chris said, got something in my throat. <clears> throat> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's starting to show um, some signs of a uh, failure. Mm. So, do, do do doctors usually when, when they when you have when you go for a transplant, do they tell you say, listen, this this might be all right for seven, ten years, and then you'll need another one? Do you know that going into a um, this, into surgery? Yeah, it's it's a general uh, it's a general like understanding that the lifeline is about seven years. And then there's certain things. Big Milos. Hey, where, how, how come you guys started already? 11, 11 o'clock, man. Yeah, it's 11, <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> it's 11 zero, zero. Okay. okay. So we just talked, we, ju we, we're just talking to Flex from the hospital and he's just giving us a quick breakdown on what's been going on. He went in for shoulder surgery two weeks ago, a little over two weeks ago. Ended up staying in instead of going home because of the pain, managed the pain and and so on. And then he he developed a, an infection or something, and now he's got some kid, the kidney problems. The kidney levels are not great, and he's uh, probably he, well. He most likely is going in for oh, kid, kidney biopsy today. Yeah, actually, um, I'll be able to if you want uh, be on the host. So um, I was able to have him push it back till tomorrow. Uh, cause they have to, cause I'm on blood thinners anyway. Right. Okay. So they got to get all that balance and it takes, uh, it takes a little bit over 12 hours to try to get my blood back to being balanced off of the, the, uh, blood thinners. So, um, mm. the scourge right now, they just told me to schedule sometime early tomorrow morning. Why, why did uh, I, did I tell you before? I, I think I told you over the phone, but I heard, um, who was mm -hmm. it? I think it was Ron Harris. Talking, he said he did something on he did something on muscle development where he mentioned that you had your second transplant already. Yeah, I, I consider Ron a friend. 
Um, I, I'm not sure where he got that information from, but it's 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 uh, hilariously wrong. Yeah, I think he- I think it was Ron. I said Ron, if it's if it wasn't you, I apologize, but I think it was Ron. He mentioned somewhere that you uh, had two kidney transplants. It's a, yeah, a rumor, I think. Huh? Yeah, whoever it was, uh, no, I've, I've only had one back in 2003. Yeah, I'm sorry, Flex, because uh, <clears throat> I was late. Uh, the last thing you said, the first thing I heard was seven-year life expectancy, something. Yeah, that, uh, okay. that's a normal. That's a normal life expectancy of a kidney uh, when you have a transplant. And then there are certain things that can expand that or things that can shorten that. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, so I, I, didn't, I didn't know that either. I thought once you get a kidney, you got a kidney, you're good to go. Yeah, me too. I, I thought that too. And, um, uh, you know, uh, I used to have to have these checkups every three months uh, right after my transplant for a couple of years. And I noticed like they'd ask me these pattern of questions over and over and over the exact same pattern so finally i was like you know why, why why do you guys do that you know why do you why do you keep asking me those questions but um so he ended up telling me you know yeah man you know uh life expectancy is only about seven years but unlike like if you have a damaged heart you get a new heart you're fine so um with my disease fsgs um the kidney is like is the one that's taking the damage, but it's not the culprit. It's something in my blood or something like that that causes it. So um, the the disease FSGS continues to try to destroy my new kidney anyway. So I've met patients, parents, you know, they're like 14, 15 years old, and they'll go in and get a kidney transplant, and they have FS, FSGS also. They'll go in and get a, a kidney transplant, and they'll leave the hospital seven days later on dialysis, uh, dialysis because the disease that's destroyed the new kidney. So um, it's, it's you know, like a lot of people think, oh, you know, well, oh, he just did this because of the stuff he used. Man, I wish, right? I wish that was the case, but I got to worry about, like, my kids, my grandkids, you know, having mm. this disease. So, um, yeah. Oh, so, so you, can, you can pass that along to yeah, your kids? Yeah, yeah, man. So it's, have, it's, they, it's, have any of your kids ever tested for it? Is that, is that something that you can test? No, it's nothing you can test for. Um, now with technology, we understand the first sign would be uh, protein in your urine, leak in protein in your urine. Um, so now, and I can go back now in history and, and show like back when I was like 21, 22 years old, I was already leaking protein in my urine. So if that was now, that would be a sign of like, hey, we need to start running some tests to see if you have this disease back then, freaking, uh, you know, t- what? 1990, uh, 1998, when they found out, they didn't know this. So there's no tests that they can do. But when my kids go going to get checkups and stuff like that, that's one of the key things they look for is protein in the urine. So when, when I went into failure, renal failure, I was leaking uh, 16 grams, which is deadly. I mean, you're pretty much walking dead. I know Milos probably knows about those numbers also. You're pretty much walking dead at 16 grams of protein in your urine. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't want to be a bearer of the bad news. I remember back in the day when you were diagnosed, and then I, I talked to my sister. Says uh, like, what is uh, life expectancy? And I say like, oh, majority they have only like five years, and then uh, yeah, yeah, the ten years. I mean, fifteen years. Um, you said when you said life expect uh, Milos, are you talking about the person itself or the kidney? No, FSGS yeah. uh, uh, established patients. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, most of them pass away from it. Most most, most patients, regardless, uh, pass away from it because it's just, it doesn't go away. So if if I'm going into ring, you don't feel here, um, I'll, you know, have to go through the whole rigmarole and, you know, get back on a transplant, uh, transplant list and hopefully get a new kidney before, you know, I expire. But um, that's it. That, that I, I can only have two transplants, you know, because they, they put them in the front. So... The disease doesn't go away, so you know. Um, hopefully, you know, if, when that time comes of uh, having a transplant, you know, I'll outlive the kidney, meaning I'll be at an age where you know I'll naturally just expire, and I won't fight against it anymore. So you can only have two kidney transplants. Yeah. Yeah, so- because the risk factor also. So my 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 disease, uh, there's no cure for it. So it's a, it's the most aggressive and deadly uh, kidney disease known to man. And there's no cure for it. So they would only risk two kidneys on me, and especially at my age, 
when they could save a, a person who could have longevity mm -hmm. uh, with life. Yeah, that's crazy because, you know, and this is only because if you have that, that disease or is that for any kidney transplant? Nah, it's just that's a FSGS. Oh, okay. So that's only related to, okay. I thought because yeah. there's a lot of, you, you see kids that, you know, go in renal failure, they need kidneys, in, you know, and if they, if the kidney is only good for seven years, that means in 14 years, you, you, you maxed out, you know? Yeah. So, okay, that but makes sense. I, I'm not overly like, like, you know, I'm not overly like upset about it. Mm. That's about 20 years, man. So how, how do the doctors explain to you that even with the disease, you outlive this kidneys three times the, the amount. It should be in there. I mean, like they're uh, dumbfounded. They're like, man, you know, regardless, flex, you know, this kidney has done its job. You know, you, you got to be happy that it lasted this long. So, even like I said, just for a normal person, you know, uh, seven to uh, ten years of the life expectancy. So I'm going on twenty years hmm. with FSDS. So I mean, I can't be upset about what you know. I mean, I can't be upset about anything. You know, that's just a true sign that, uh, you know, my uh, my uh, donor was a friend from church. And like her mother says, well, you're part Filipino now because, you know, she was Filipino. Um, but she's like, you know, obviously the, the kidney came from an extraordinary person. Mm. Can we yeah. clear can we clear something up that's been going around that I think it's, it's a good opportunity right now since we have you on here to clear that? Because there's a lot yeah. of videos where people speculating. Because yes. you put a post, oh, I, I, you put a post up saying Chris didn't, Chris didn't beat me at the Olympia. Yeah, let's clear that up. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you, you put a post up two two days ago where you said say say goodbye, say goodbye to the dreamer, and of yeah. course now people so, speculating what is he doing? You know what, what's what's going on? Can can you clear that up? What you meant by that? Yeah. For, so first, I love that video. I don't know who created that video. It's like my awesome video. Time. Yes. Yeah, it is beautiful, and the music is so powerful, right? So, you know, um, you know, I, I consider myself a dreamer, you know, in, in bodybuilding and, and everything. So, um, I've done that same video again before, and I just, I would just say the dreamer. Um, so, if you listen to the music, the second song was really powerful. It's talking. Um, I can't remember, and I don't want to ruin it. Go back, whoever was thinking. I go back and listen to the video and listen to that second song, and you hear the words. And that's what I'm saying. Basically, they're saying that they can never have this. That they're dreaming. So I'm just saying, you know, mm -hmm. saying goodbye to the dream. Yeah, a, a lot of people took it as uh, um, oh, Flex Wheeler is saying goodbye. He's, you know, is he suicidal? Or is he is he does he know something we don't know? Just I mean, wanted. I just wanted to clear that up. Would I really use Instagram as a platform to tell people that? <laughs> not, I'm not saying that to you, right? Yeah. And you didn't call me about it. Chris didn't call me about it. None of my people called I, me about it. Because I wasn't worried. I wasn't worried because I, I understood that it has nothing to do with you telling I mean, people, listen, I'm, I'm out of here. The thing yeah. is, the thing is, being in a, being a, as a hospital veteran as myself, uh, I know your mind is, you're thinking about a whole lot of different things when you're in the, in the hospital. And, uh, yeah, you're in your feelings a lot, man, because that's mm. all you have is to look at retired uh, uh, competitors or re retired uh, sportsmen in some type of sport, and that's all on TV and stuff. And then, I mean, you just, uh, you're emotional, you're, you're all these things, and it's going up and down throughout the day. Sometimes you may be laughing, someday you may be crying. Yeah. You know, yeah. all these things are going on when you're in the hospital. I understood it exactly as that. And uh, hey, man, I'm, I'm coming out there tomorrow, and I hope you, uh, I can get a chance to stop by if if if, if I'm uh, if I'm if I'm able to. If that's allowed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd love to see you. Yeah, you, you're allowed. The all restrictions are off. Here, here's another thing I wanted. To, I always ask you because now you said you 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 went through so much in the hospital. I mean, last year you caught COVID. You ended up in in the hospital in in Orlando for a month, if I'm not uh, mistaken. 45 days. So, you know, you went through so much shit, you know. And I got How, COVID again. Huh? I got COVID again. I just got over it. Oh, really? Yeah, believe that crap, man. That's yeah. another thing, dude. So all the boosters. It was, all it was the, shorter, though, right? Yeah, it was shorter. Yeah, yeah but did you, did you get faster. sick? Did you get sick again? Yeah, I got sick. I ended up in the hospital. Um, I just didn't want to talk about it this time, hmm. you know, because like overkill and 
you know, I knew I wasn't as sick and, you know, you still got people, you know, expiring from you. So I don't want to bring it up when people were like in a worse situation than I was. Yeah. But you always managed to still stay somewhat positive, man. And, and I want, I wanted to know, and this is for the people listening because there's a lot of people out there with issues, you know, what is it that someone can do in, in, in not so much in your case right now, we go through a lot of stuff, but what is it that keeps you positive and, 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 and what would you suggest other people to do when they're in a similar situation? You know, so first and foremost, <clears throat> um, I want to apologize because I'm going to get emotional. That's okay, brother. That's okay. Yeah, man, I understand, bro. You really will know. We'll know. I've been at your bedside many times. Many times I've been at your bedside from something, but you overcame a lot, man. You sound very strong. Your voice sound very strong. I was, I was happy to hear that though. Yeah. 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 No, um, he, he's a strong person. Obviously you must be strong going through all this shit and still be able to talk about it. Was, yeah. That's strength right there. Go ahead, Flex. Go ahead. Uh, you know, I, I really, um, I thought, of course, everybody know I've been suicidal since first time I tried to take my life. I was like, you know, 11. And then, you know, I tried throughout my entire career, even, you know, training with Chris and banging and competing and, and winning shows and all over the world, I would consistently, you know, still try uh, to take my life. And um, what really happened is uh, when I lost my leg, uh, you would have thought that would have been like severely my tipping point, right? Um, but it wasn't, you know, um, It's just, it's just like something came over me and not only the doctors and nurses that didn't even know who I was, they kept telling me, you know, you're going to do greater things than you ever done in your life. You know, I'm like, what do you mean? How do you know that? Yeah. It's just lost my leg. What are you talking about? But my point is, um, Hey, what's up everyone. I am on my way to Chandler, Arizona to, uh, well, who's playing my, who's playing my stories now? <laughs> But that's a good way to break up the God go damn. now. Yeah, get this guy. <laughs> Goddamn Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Dennis, hey. I'm sorry, Flex. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Don't don't mind Chris yeah, right now. He's playing with his phone. Uh, I'll pay him. He's a real big George B. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I I just I I really I have to accept what a lot of people have been telling me over the years that I was put here for something greater than competing. And uh, when I lost my leg, I just, like I said in the video, uh, when I wake up and I look down and see it missing, either I'm going to lose it or I'm going to be all right. And when I woke up and I looked down, I was like, all right, you know, it's gone. But it gave me an opportunity to, 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 to communicate with people I would have never been able to because we all got to admit, you look at a person who's lost a arm or a leg and you wonder what's their story? You know, how did that happen? You know, you want to look at them, you want to look at the missing part, but you don't want to be like, you know, uh, uh, rude. And I found myself in that position. Uh, so when I started going out in public, kids would look at me and I would engage with them because they'd look and then they kind of look away. And I would, I would engage them like, Hey, how you doing? You know, you want to touch it? It's okay. Come over. You know, you can touch it if you want. But, um, I, I just realized that it, it, it put me in a genre where I would never be able to communicate with people. And, um, I just truly feel that, you know, everything that I've been through in life, whether it's been homeless or molested or beaten, you know, um, helped me to, to prepare for these big battles now. Uh, um, and, uh, I just feel that, you know, That's my job now, um, to be a, a beacon of light in, in some of the worst, darkest times, because all of us, like you said, Dennis, are going through horrible times, some mm -hmm. worse than others. Um, so my strength draws from that because I know I was put here for something bigger than that. And then secondly, you know, I don't want to um, like be a Bible thumper, but I believe. Yeah. It's no doubt. I believe. Yeah. And I know that he's my father. You'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And I know he put me here for bigger reasons than that. Mm. 
And, you know, like, like there's these cliches like, you know, God only gives his biggest battles to his greatest warriors. Yeah. I, I don't feel I, like I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I sat down many times and I was like, every time I, if I'm looking at myself and I want to complain about something that's going on with me or going around me, many times I use you as an example to tell myself to shut the hell up and keep doing what you're doing. Because, you know, because you know, I'm, I'm complaining about things that you would probably laugh about. You know what I'm saying? And, and therefore, I use you as an example and I use you as an inspiration to, to, uh, to just try to stay positive even when shit goes wrong. You know what I mean? Well, I and I think, and I think you touched a lot of people with, uh, 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 in the last, I'll say, four or five years with the stuff that you're going through and people see how you react, how you come out of it, and you're still up there smiling, you're still up there doing your thing, you're still going to the gym, you're still training people, you're still doing stuff that others probably wouldn't do or couldn't do, you know? Well, I can you. jump in uh, to just say this. Uh, one of the last times I saw you in the gym, I've seen you one more time uh, you know, recently, but uh, uh, you were training Andrew Jack. Yeah. And you look so, so, so bad. I mean, I, I, mean, I, uh, I was beside myself. I came there. I, I think I kissed your forehead. I didn't know where to look. You look drained out of life completely. I mean, right now, you look... Uh, revive you look you look very good i mean seriously i look at your eyes i mean you're back this is good but to uh show up in the gym and train andrew and take him to the posing and everything else in this kind of condition i was like this is the next level mm -hmm. i mean the pain too yes that's what trips me out i, I made one time you know uh, you know how flex is we all want to encourage it, each other every time and I've seen some of your posts, and then one time you were talking about that pain, and then I was being like a kind of smart ass and saying, okay, pain is sensation, makes you feel alive, like embrace the pain, enjoy the pain, and shit like this, right? But then uh, you say, you know, bro, this is different kind of pain, and you live with this kind of pain day in, day out, from morning till night, which like, I guess uh, I better shut up. But uh, one way or another, Flex, I mean, as you say, we say, uh, God gave the, the most challenge to the greatest warriors. You're a prime example. I mean, uh, whatever is thrown your way, you keep, uh, you know, overcoming. So you, you are that bright light for all of us. I mean, you know, purpose, whatever that might be right now, is to encourage and uh, enlighten all of us. You know, um, talking to three of the most closest uh, gentlemen, on a planet that I had an honor of uh, standing on stage and did fierce battles, beautiful. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't mean a derogatory way. I mean, and I'm not. I, I don't know what it's like for the guys to compete in today's era, but I know back then we fiercely battled, man. We battled fiercely. Uh, to hear you gentlemen say that about me, thank you. That means the world to me. No, it's yeah, true. man. Yeah. And also, also even. You know, I, you know how we've been, Flex. You know, I, like I said, I've been at your bedside. I've, I've been there ready to fight for you at the drop of a hat. No one could say nothing to you without me being there. And um, I just, uh, it, I want to uh, say you're just a remarkable person, but remarkable. Hey, don't don't get us all to cry now. Let, let, let's not go there. This should be yeah. a... <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> well, I wanna, you got to know, you know, gotta know, brother. One one thing that I regret the most, Chris, is after uh, watching your story, uh, one thing that bothered me and still bothers me to this day is, yeah, you you were you were by my bedside many a times, and yeah, it, it's back in our times, man. You couldn't say nothing to me, you or Rico. Uh, without without somebody getting hurt really 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 bad, um, I, I, I'm upset that I wasn't there for you because I didn't know that you were going through some, some horrific things and I knew what those things was like the back surgery and and oh, being yeah. told I, I, I'm still crushed to this time that I wasn't there for you uh, that still bothers me to this date I wasn't there for you. Yeah, I know it, it was it was it was different time. I was on the other side of the United States. I was in Jersey, you know, Hackerstown, and 
Yeah, man. Uh, I've been through it, bro. That was, I don't know. I would have cried the whole time anyway, so if you would have came there for sure. We got that tomorrow. We got time yeah. for that. Yeah. Like hey, man, my, bir my birthdays are coming up. I'm going to get a big party bus, and we're going to fucking ride around Vegas. You, you when, when is your birthday? I got to bring you up. His the 23rd, right? Yeah, mine's the 23rd. 23rd yeah. of, of August. Of August, yeah. Yeah. Chris, I just want to know, uh, you and Dennis, why why do you guys got to flick, you know, um, kilos with your picture in the background, which is constant? <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I see a hey this, is, this is the backdrop. I'm trying to this position is... mine right. I need Chris be phone. moving this from side to side. I've been, <laughs> I've been all over the place. I had it over here. <laughs> this yeah. is a new position right here. <laughs> you guys, hey Dennis, you, huh? I can ask. Um, how did the show go this weekend, um, um, Chris? How did it go? To yeah. Show? By the way, Chris was uh, he uh, he uh, did the commentating for the live pay per view this weekend. Chris did a good job. Thank Chris. You, bro. So how? Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about the Chicago Pro. Did uh, Milos, you obviously followed the Chicago Pro. Uh, Flex, I don't know if you followed it. Did you follow it a little bit? I've seen a few pictures and I tried to comment on a few, but yeah, I, I, okay. sometimes. I just, I just watched the pay-per-view because I, wa I just wanted to hear Chris. I just wanted to hear Chris so I can <laughs> so I can get on his ass if he says something stupid. But he, he <laughs> but but no, I couldn't. I, no, I, I was I was happy for him. So Chris, let, let's talk about Chicago. You were right there. I mean, we can just go off what we saw on uh, on the videos and stuff. It looked to me like there was Antoine, who was in great condition, and then there was really nobody else. Right. Um, it, it looked like it was. It, it looked. It kind of like it was. It was a somewhat weaker lineup. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, because a lot of some of the guys been competing a lot uh, these years. But uh, Tony O, he was at the. He was the. Uh, uh, he got moved out at first, and then they brought him back in to to battle for first. Are oh, you talking? Bur you're talking Burton, Tony Burton. Yeah. So he uh, he he had a he, he looked. These is, I mean, I would just like to see his legs uh, sharper. I don't know if it's deep tissue or something he needs or something. Um, I like the brother. I feel like he's going to be, you know, someone. I, I just think he's got that little shape that it don't matter how how much smaller he is than someone, he could still compete. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, as far as uh, I, I like that the judges just like say, okay, Antoine, you go off to the side and we're going to move these guys in and let these guys compete for whatever's left because mm -hmm. he was he was the clear winner yeah he, he was my quarterback <laughs> in that show yeah and, uh I, also man his girlfriend took me to the airport i mean to the uh venue because my uber is going to make me late for the show i couldn't even get mic'd up but i i called him up on the phone and said hey man can you get right to the venue <laughs> and uh and his girl uh left uh he was tanned getting tanned at the time his look his girl jumped in the I think her name was taylor she jumped into the car and took me over to the venue and saved my ass so <laughs> you were going to be late yeah i was going to be late like a oh. mom i was like i was like <laughs> <laughs> SOS. Uh, <laughs> and it was too far to run. And it was, <laughs> it was I had my suit on. And uh yeah, bro, I would have got I would have got split in half with that one, but yeah. Um yeah, and I was, in, I was at a different hotel. They were all in the same Right, hotel. right, right. I got my tickets late, so Minos, were you, were you there or you watched it from home? No, no, I wasn't, but uh, now that you're saying Chicago and the airport, I remember the first time I was in uh Chicago and I'm just ordering a. Uh, uh, you know, a cab taking me in the early 90s to the airport. I didn't know there was O'Hare and the other one. The mid, 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 midway, midway? Whatever it is. But of course, I was <laughs> dropped off at the wrong one. <laughs> I didn't even realize you know, I could do it. Wait a second, so I missed the flight. But uh, yeah, the, the thing about uh, a contest. So first, I've seen uh, uh, Antoine when he beat... Uh, uh, Max Charles here in uh, in uh, Las Vegas at California Pro a couple of years ago, and then I had a chance to train him uh, following day. Uh, Dorian Hamilton brought him to the gym, and uh, uh, I wanted him to to train chest because I wanted to see his physique mm -hmm. the filled up, stupid, explosive chest. And I don't know if you've seen those pictures and videos. I mean, 
when he had fullness right here, his physique looks different, the next level. Yeah. You know, this is kind of vision that I have for him. So this year, obviously, he's scaled down because, uh, you know, he has some issues and he had to be very careful with the supplements, right? Uh, I think I mentioned this, that uh, Dorian said he did a one-fourth of a normal supplementation and got himself in this kind of conditioning. So Antoine texted me uh, you know, says, is this 90s approved conditioning? I said, absolutely. His conditioning was spot on and his presentation was phenomenal. I mean, he really but puts the effort the and enjoys himself. The, the strides yeah. in the legs was very impressive. Yeah, uh, uh, legs are off the chart, yes. I, I've seen his, and his arms are pretty good, right? And uh, when he hits the pose, he, but, but he's a little bit smaller than what yeah. he visualized what was a couple of years ago, right? But listen, convincing victory, Olympia qualification, now he has about five months to prepare. Uh, I, what I was saying about his presentation, you see, most of the guys go there to work it off. They actually, they took that posing as a chore. This is like, oh shit, okay. Uh, let me go, uh, posing routine, right? So they, they usually just hit the mandatories and walk off the stage. Now guys like Antoine or my Samson, right, the Uda, uh, all of you guys, myself included, we went on stage, it was not working it off. It's like, wait until I show you <laughs> what I got, right? People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. So Antoine had that. He was energetic, he enjoyed, he angled himself, everything was perfect. So clear cut winner, I wasn't there, but I heard they, they even put him on side. Okay, now let's fight for the second yeah. place. Didn't second place Antonio, right? I seen him first time in the Reno show after uh, Olympia, mm -hmm. and I was like, who the hell is this guy? I mean, two twelve, round bursting, great condition, everything, right? So I thought that he can uh, he can give a run uh, for the money uh, to Antonio if. Uh, uh, Antoine, if he is uh, uh, super shredded and, and on. I mean, you mentioned something about legs. I, I told you, uh, his legs uh, sweeping, full, separated, maybe not comparison to Antoine, but you know, I, I think that's legs and back is where he got the. Uh, and then his glutes, the glutes wasn't there, and uh, the hand, glutes and hands wasn't there like it should have been. Uh, that In sense of dryness? Yes, yeah. Because if that was better, he would have he would have fought a little closer, you know. Because his front his front looked really, 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 really good from the front. But just when he turned to the back, you could see the difference. Who yeah. got who got now, third? Who uh, got third? You mentioned Andre Muzi, right? And, Andre Muzi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you didn't um, uh, notice this, uh, Dennis. Uh, Chris mentioned that uh, he competed sixteen times. He was gonna say that. Right? No, no, but but it's very important because nobody competed. Uh, that time, uh, we did 11 shows back in the day, you know, uh, 97, both you and I, we did all the same shows. And I think in our history, Albert Beckles did one year, like 12 shows, but nobody did 16. And uh, of Who? course, Who did? Yeah, and I, did, I did 11. 11, I, myself yeah. included. I, I did like 32 shows in the first three years, <laughs> you know, myself. But this guy uh, competed this year five times. But back in 2008, I mean, he was not even an active, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah. I don't know. He yeah, got I think, the wrong I, think it was a, I think the language barrier. He might have. He might have joined something. I think the language barrier kind of threw yeah. me off. I was trying to compile information from each of the competitors, from from yeah, yeah. Keeney on down to bodybuilding, just to have some kind of compiled information on on the competitors. So yeah. So, I mean, this, uh, so this Andre guy, he competed five times and and and. What and what happened to him? Was he better in, in in Chicago or did he get worse? What do you guys think? Chris Chris said that he he thinks he was better than California. I thought that the California I wasn't there. Chris was there in both shows. Yeah. So just watching watching from the video, I thought that he was way better in uh, 
uh, California. He plays second. He beats Andrea Presti and all these other guys. I mean, uh, uh, conditioning was better, I think. Yeah, and, uh, and Antonio, he was he was better in, in California than he was here. But you know, these guys coming from show to show. Mm. Um, <laughs> how did how did um, um, Tim Budesheim look? The guy from Germany. He looked good. He looked good. I mean, he was at certain times. You know, d during this area, he would need to improve. But uh, I spoke good from the back. Hmm. Yeah, I, I spoke to him uh, a little bit. He was he was a little discouraged. He wanted to place better, and you know, I, I told him just keep plugging away, man. You know, you're gonna get you know different calls at different times, different different shows. But this is all learning lessons and. You know you're gonna you're gonna come back better and you know he's just, he's actually but, doing really well i mean i remember when he turned pro back in san marino he won the amateur i don't know was it the amateur olympia and then he did the pro show the yeah. very next day yeah. where cedric mcmillan brandon curry hardy chupan and he placed literally fourth behind those yeah. three guys and he was yeah. super peeled I remember that. Yeah, he looked incredible. And every show since then, I think almost every show that he did, he's always in the top five. Yeah, but a little bit off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, but he's always he's in the top, like, somewhere in the top five. Yeah. He got second in California a couple of years ago to, uh, I think, to Patrick Moore, if I'm not mistaken. So he's always somewhere, it's always somewhere right there, you know, and it's just, I don't know what it is that's missing for him just to break through. I know he's going to do um, Tampa and Texas, so he's staying here now in the U.S. to continue to do two more shows. He didn't come to Texas. I know this dude that's going to Texas, man. I don't who, know. Who? Who? Oh, think, Andrew? Think, Andrew? Milos might have seen him creeping <laughs> around. I don't know, man. It's different. It's yeah. different. <laughs> so How's he looking? Why is he, why, is he, why, is he do, why is he doing only Texas? Why is he not doing Tampa the week before? Um, because he had just got here, it was a problem with him getting here from um, from um, Dubai. So he's and here then, though, but he's here. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, so he's here. why not do uh, both? You know what? I don't know. Uh, right now, what we got planned is we got the the Texas, and then he won the wild card, which is great for the Honor Classic UK. He won the wild card for that. You don't, have to, you don't have to win every show. It's not like a ratio to yeah. where you can keep your ratio at like your batting average or something up. Just get in there, get some money, get some, get some uh, experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what's I different, different about him and his maturity is like, man, he's like, you know, flex. I'm not going to just stay at home. I'm going to compete. You know, he goes, I don't make no money at home. He goes, I don't know why. Tampa, I yeah, but that's why, that's why I don't understand why he wouldn't do Tampa next week or in two weeks. It's just, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't plan it out as we were talking about it, as me and him and George were talking about it. Um, I, I was trying because it was, it was earlier the year, in the year. And remember, um, we got to plan things way out ahead you know, for him because him being way in Dubai. I couldn't get the exact date on the Texas show and everything like that. So the promoter from, I mean, uh, uh, Tampa show. So the promoter from the uh, Texas show responded and told me a, a secure date. And we were like, all right, we'll do that. And then, like I said, you know, by the grace of God, he won the wild card. So I know the uh, audience is going to love him over at the UK. But uh, I know Milo seen him. And, you know, we didn't want to, like, make excuses that, you know, he was sick last uh, earlier at the Arnold Classic Amateur. But he was really sick. And a lot of things went on. But right now he's walking around at 298 pounds in better shape than he was on your honor classic stage and i i mean milos is a very honest person you can ask him if i'm lying yeah it's super impressive and you see this this came the same day with uh michael Crizo, Crizo, i think that's that's how you say his name the chicksalakian guy uh, came to uh um the the dragon Slayer. did you just say so, did you did, did you just say czech slovakian guy <laughs> yeah Czech. <laughs> Yeah. I, you know, you know what it is. I don't know if it's Czech or Slovakian. It's Slovakia. It's Slovakia. He's from Slovakia. Ah, he's Slovakian. You see? Yeah. Uh, it's better. It's better. I said this way. Slovakia. <laughs> but, but yeah, and uh, I know that uh, Andrew and Michael Krizer they are talking. You know, so and uh, when I posted that video of Michael posing, interestingly, Andrew put "What a freak!" and you know, so coming from another freak, uh, so like yeah, this is really really funny. And next day, I really wanted to maybe uh, get the picture with both of them, but it just didn't happen because uh, Andrew was doing legs and doing some serious 
leg work, you know, so I didn't want to bother him. And I didn't ask him to strip off the shirt to see his condition, you know, because I can, you know, when you do the legs, last thing you want to do is stay in the gym. You just want to go home. But he looked humongous and he has that flex villarish. Wow. You know, the everything is happening. He lifts his arms, you know, hanging, uh, picking biceps, hanging triceps back. You know, shape is there. Okay, so I can only imagine, and Andrew is very confident he can beat Steve Kuklo. I mean, I know that Steve Kuklo going in Texas show Good. is one of the favorites, right? That's gonna uh, be I like that because it's a newcomer. I'm sure that, you know, all of you guys, when you turn pro, especially you, Flex, the first pro show, uh, you did an Iron Man 93 with uh, uh, Labrada and Vince Taylor. Like, what were the chances that... Uh, IBB Pro just turned and making his debut can beat guys like that, right? And yeah. you did. For three so, guys. Oh. But that's yeah. just, uh, it's just, I don't get it why guys don't compete, man. You don't make money sitting at home, man. You know, I'm not saying go and whore yourself out, but, you know, strategically pick some big money shows. And, um, but, you know, he says, man, you know, so I don't want to tell his whole story, but um, he's like, listen, he goes, I'm not staying at home. He goes, on top of that, he goes, he goes, bro, he goes, I'm not sure. He goes, but if I was even to play second or third, I might retire. He goes, if I win the Olympia, I'm probably definitely retiring. He goes, if you think I'm an idiot and I'm going to hurt myself going and chasing titles, he goes, I'm not the one. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't say that loud because, you know, you don't want to say if I win the Olympia, I retire. You know, no, yeah, that, a, that's not a good said, way to go I'm, into the Olympia. He said if he even dreams that he won the Olympia, he said if he wake up and like if he dreamed that he won it, he goes he's gonna retire right yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the field champ. You know, so well, listen, uh, uh, he, I'm sorry. That, Dennis was trying to make a point, uh, Flex. Dennis was asking if Andrew doesn't make money at home, wants to compete, right? There's a show. No, he said he. Time. I think he makes money at home. I think he has a job in Dubai where he gets paid. He's, yeah, uh, yeah. he's an engineer for something. Uh, I'm not I sure what. He's making money in Dubai. Yeah. So I guess he's yeah. making enough money for him to maybe say, you know, don't worry about Tampa. You know, I would like to see him on the Tampa stage because Tampa seems to be a little bit better, uh, um, uh, um, like more athletes, I guess. Yeah, I, don't know. I would have I would have liked to see him at Dunn both too. I just, I can't, you know, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know about other people's camp, but I, I, I told, you know, my guys, I'm not the boss. You know, they are, you know, if I'm the boss, then you do what I say. But it's not that I go, I, I make suggestions and you agree to do it or not. So therefore, you're the boss because you made the decision to do it or not. So mm -hmm. you're the decision maker. So I would like to do it. OK, so Flex, since, since we have you here right now, you know what he looks like. I don't know. I haven't seen anything. So predict. I'll, I'll send predict. each one of you guys. If you promise not to show nobody. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just asking you. Just, you just tell me. Just put it here on the screen. You know. <laughs> you, you just, just tell me this. It's just us guys. What, what are you predicting for him in 2022? He's gonna make a lot of noise. No, no, no. Just tell me. What are you predicting <laughs> hey, for him? What's gonna right happen? Now. I think he's gonna be. Uh, I think he's gonna be in the top. Five uh, Olympia, um, and I'm being. So you uh, predicting that he's going to win Texas? Yes. You predicting he's going to win the UK Arnold? Yeah. And you predicting that he's going to be in the top five at the Olympia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I um, mean, yeah. listen, I mean, if you don't know, who knows? Yeah, that's saying something. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't, I haven't seen, haven't met him, but. I, now, I like now, this. let me ask you this, Flex, and this is and this is a serious question. In person. I know he has the physique. But is he ready to do all this this year? <clears throat> when I when I when I saw you the video, you let me know. No, no, I'm well, just I mean, you know you I know the lot about, of the physical. I think it's about when you when you go to compete, when yeah. you go to peak, the mentality behind that, right? Yeah. Being right. on the stage, yeah. oh, no, having the win. Are, are yeah. you are you coaching him up on on the stage presence on what to do's and don'ts on the on the uh, on the posing dials and. Yeah, 100 percent, because I'm telling them already, um, you know, people, this is going to only be your second time being seen uh, compete, period, because you've never been seen competing in the NPC. Uh, and this is going to be a second time that the U.S. audience have ever seen you. I go, so 
people are going to want to see you. Now, everybody already know you got big size. Everybody already know you got a small waist and all this and beautiful lines that go. So what they're going to think is, is you're going to lean on all that to win. And, and that's what's going to make you great. So what I do is like uh, I tell them and I send them videos and I film videos of the old days of me and you and Enrico. Well, not Rico. Rico was just in a, in a room. He didn't he didn't get down like that. But, but I put him through hell and I just tell him, listen, man, I go, we need to walk into the show as if nobody respects us. Nobody gives a damn about you and nobody gives a shit about you. And they all just want to whoop your, you know, your ASS. I go, that's the mentality you need to have as you're going in as the underdog because you are when you look at it. So. Um, but maturity wise, I, I say he is more so than anything. Um, physique wise on all that stuff, you honestly, right? You honestly have to see that person on stage with high quality people to really make that call, right? Because on uh, lackluster guys, you can look like Superman against them. And you can look like Superman in a gym by yourself. We know that, right? Um, I mean, Paul Gillette used to scare the shit out of me walking around the gym. Uh, you know, I'd be terrified, but it'd be different when we go on stage. So, um, that has to be wait and seen when we see him up against real good people. But as far as maturity wise, a hundred percent, man. Okay. 100%. So what, so what, another question. <laughs> Let me ask the question. Oh, today. Okay. What are you telling him? What is he going to do? Are you telling him you're going to win the Olympia? What are you telling him how far he can oh, go this year? I tell him that you have Olympia uh, a potential a hundred percent. I tell him without a shadow of a doubt, you 100% have the Olympia potential is whether you get there or not. And I tell them also the truth. I had Olympia potential, but did I win? So keep that in mind and don't let that go to your head right. just because you, so that that's really why I'm mean. asking. That's why I'm asking because there's guys yeah. going to the Olympia. They should have right. Olympia medals and, and stand outs at their house and they don't, right. you know, right. you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking and hoping, but I'm really thinking now that we're talking like this, this might be a time where big Rami's, Big Rami, but I mean, between all these other cats, the other guys, they all seem like they may be able to step up and 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 kind of cut in half that big size difference from what he's always been winning with. It might give a good battle. Wouldn't that wouldn't that be awesome to see? Like the size wasn't a factor. Everybody's coming with something that's just a little bit different. I Maybe have a feeling. Favorite. I have a feeling that this year we're going to see some more conditioned guys at the Olympia because we've been talking about it. And, and I think that Hadi Chupan is You're famous. Hello. <laughs> I think, I think Hadi, Hadi Chupan played a major factor in this, that everybody else is stepping up their game when it comes to condition. Cause they know that, uh, you know, last year, Hadi Chupan stood out, Nick Walker stood out. And, and, and I think these guys know they're going to have to step it up this year. And with newer guys coming, you know, and I listen, I, I, I agree 100 percent that and Andrew has every title written all over his physique. I just it. yeah, I just know that it, 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 it takes a great physique, but it also takes a great mind with experience to get there. Yeah. You yeah. know, and sometimes you can get overwhelmed not knowing how good you really are. And then you get thrown into the into the cage with guys that's been doing this for many, many years, and there's a lot of things that he doesn't know, and it starts with the athletes meeting. It starts with the press conference. It starts with little things that you don't, you know, that he doesn't even think about right now. Yeah. You know? but, he has, but he has you in the corner, and he has George, and you guys both know what's happening. Yeah, and he, he pulls from that experience, but all I can say, honestly, is I, I'm, I'm brutally honest with him, and I remind him, you know, uh, don't don't get too big for your britches because, listen, at one time they literally had my name written on the trophy, you know, in 98. It was like, you know, even at all the conferences and everything, you talk to the competitors like, oh, flex one. That don't mean anything. So, you know, he, he, all I can really say is his maturity as a person is, is even more uh, superior than his physique, if you can mm -hmm. imagine that. And I think also it, it, it comes from where he comes from. You notice like uh, Europeans and, uh, and especially Europeans or, or, or people who come from like uh, countries that, that things are really rough. They grow up and mature a lot faster. So the guy's from Nigeria, you know, and he barely got, he tells me of his stories of his mother, how she would beat his butt because he was like, I thought he wanted to be a gangster, you know, and stuff like that. So it just causes you to mature a lot more, but you know what? Hey, 
we're going to find out. It's going to be a beautiful ride. And you know what? It's, it's a beautiful world where we were talking about multiple cats who have potential in winning instead of just all done. Yeah, all done. Yeah. Um, yeah we talked about multiple guys who have a chance of winning instead of like, uh, so-and-so is just going to run away from the show. This is just beautiful for our sport right now that mm -hmm. we're talking about multiple guys who can come up there and new blood that can come up there and do some damage. I just think we're kind of in a great time for our sport right now. Yeah. Speaking no, of great no, I have, time, I have, let, me, let me say one thing. Uh, when we were competing, there was the Europeans and there was the Americans, you know, people from UK or so. That was the, the competition. But now we got the Brazilians. We, we got some people from China, we got yeah. European, then the Europeans have gotten better than they were back in the yeah. day. Now, now, now they want to step up and do, do the damn thing too. So, and we, yeah. got, the, and we got the Canadians, the Canadians are 10 times yeah. they used to be. We used to have one oh, Canadian. Oh yeah. And that was yeah. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> one Canadian, Nimrod King. Was we got there. a lot of Canadians, yeah. we got a yeah. lot of Canadians dominating their, their, sure. their categories. Yeah. Like yeah. Chris Bumstead. Yeah. We have like yeah. uh, Laura Lee. We got Missy Truscott. Yeah. Th th those guys are on top of their and, game. And 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 not only that, um, before, and and they had to thank they had to thank that uh, you know they they're competing today, Dennis. They're competing today. Guess what? They own all their damn footage. They own all their damn content. We didn't own our shit. We mm. was owned. <laughs> our shit was owned. <laughs> I want somebody that. else. But they, they, they get right. all their content, and man, they should be damn happy about that. Hey, you know what? If it wasn't for Milos, and I'm gonna say this publicly, if it wasn't for you, Milos, taking all these goddamn pictures, I, know. I wouldn't I have I nothing. Funny. Hey, I thought he was weird for that shit. Like, I, that, you know what? And that, Milos, that and, and, and I, I hope he apologizes for me. I was a dick. You know, he, every time I'm trained, I'm done, I'm drained. I'm, he can, well, let's take some pictures, take some pictures. Let's yeah. pose, let's pose, let's pose. I was like, this goddamn Milos. Hey, <laughs> but I got to say, the best pictures, the best pictures it's, it's I got like from that. Milos. It's always like that. Yeah. And I tell you, people actually think that some photoshopped and... Uh, it was zero Photoshop, obviously, <laughs> and you didn't look as good on pictures as you look uh, look in person. Yeah. I say this all the time. <laughs> but you were just one of those freaks. But, but every uh, time, but every time I was training, you know, and I was like, okay, yeah. Milos, Milos is in the office. Oh, He's not here. Because, so I'm uh, training. I'm trying to get my workout in, and like two sets left. Here come Milos with the camera around his neck. Dennis. <laughs> 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 He's come running with the camera, sweating and shit. Hey, 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 hey guys, hey, guys. <laughs> a great photo right here. No, but hey, I mean, pictures are forever. It's right? true, true. And then one time he sends me like, uh, uh, I don't know how many pictures, like uh, hundreds of pictures, yes. yes. You know, but there's some great shots, man, some really great pictures, and I use them all the time. Yeah, okay. You know? But this uh, is, I'm going to use them again. I'm going to use them again now because I just signed a new deal yesterday. With a new supplement company, and uh, yeah. I'm oh, gonna use yeah. some of these pictures again. <laughs> oh, yeah, Congratulations! Which, which company? Oh, yeah. uh, it's uh, it's a comp company called Pole Nutrition. It's from India. It is mainly India and the Middle East. And, oh um, yeah, yeah, I know homeboy. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's a good deal. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy to. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. congratulations, man! Talk, talk about the reinventor. But listen, I want to ask you guys a question. <laughs> He's a phenomenal competitor, uh, and we're talking about Chris Bonsett, right? Yeah. And um, everyone's always comparing him. I hate it because they're comparing him to me, like you know, physique and classic wise and everything. I never heard them compare to uh, compare Chris oh, to no, you. Oh no, it all the time. He's yeah. Doing it. Yeah. yeah, but my my and, and you know, that's a compliment to me. I mean, geez, you're talking about a guy from back to freaking 20, 20 years ago. No problem. <laughs> but listen, I competed in the open. And I was a pretty big guy off season, right? Um, this guy, what does you got at that midline? You got to go lower. Yeah, you got to go lower. Um, flex, flex, flex giving it, getting at, instructions in the hospital. I was looking at, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was looking at some off season pictures of this guy. Man, this guy's a monster off season. He's a freaking monster he's, off he's, season. He's been putting in the work. You know, last year when he got, you know, got that great, you know, the great gains on his back. And now yeah. you can see he's, uh, he's putting in the work. And, you know, because he yeah. knows he's on top, should he, should he, but he's he not sleeping. The, do you guys think he should be thinking about going in the open with his size he has? I think he has still room to grow even in Fit and Classic. 
Yeah, if he's getting up to 260, he's got to get down to 220. He's not maxed yeah. out, though. He's That's not maxed out. Drop. It's called body building, right? Not body dropping. Uh, muscle. <laughs> body dropping. <laughs> How much did you lose, Flex, from off-season to contest shape? 50 well, pounds? Uh, let's see. I competed. Um, I competed. My heaviest was 256, and I think I came down from 290. 298. But that was your heaviest. But what was your, what, what did you come when, when you normally, were lighter? Yeah, my, uh, normally I walk around like 275 to uh, 280. Okay. So, so what 30. were you, what were you in 93, 94 and off season? So off season 93 was my smallest off season in 93. I think I was like 230. I came down to 216. Okay. So you were only 230? Uh, Chris was there. Yeah. I, I want to, uh, I want to say Flex had one of the best bodybuilding walks you can ever imagine. <laughs> I didn't make that up, man. It's because I it's cause the end, my we just talked. We just, we just talked about this last week. We talked. I listen. Y'all wrong. Y'all wrong. Here, I have another question. I have another question for Flex though, because <laughs> since 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 you are for me, I consider you the best bodybuilding physique ever to step on a bodybuilding stage, and I point out. Like I always say, 1993. It's it's a toss up between 98 and 93 Arnold Classic, but I can, I prefer 93. So now, when you look, when you we, we're here today, it's 2022. When you look back from 93 to today, who do you think, when you look at physiques and you see you seen them all, who was the closest to Flex Wheeler, in your opinion, Flex? Where you are, where you say, "Oh, this dude really kind of looks like me." Where about you know what? from England? Uh, were you going to say, Chris? No, 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 no. Let let let, let Flex okay, okay. choose first. But let, let's not throw no things out there for him. I okay, want to know. Okay. I want to know from him. Who do you think is the closest to a Flex Wheeler in his prime? I can, I can say that people that have mentioned people close to me, I didn't really think they were that close. Because they had like a body part that was similar to mine, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, I'm not gonna, then give I'm not me gonna, the, the one that was the closest to you. I know, I'm telling you right now, there was nobody close to you. But who was the was, closest? I don't think, I don't, I don't, I'm not being arrogant. Uh, I don't think there was. Cause, look who's you know, calling he, me, look who's calling me right now. Who's that? Rami. Yeah. <laughs> 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 calling on FaceTime. Should we bring him in? Like, People, it was some people that like had like a similar striations to my back or, you know, my similar density or, or similar weights, waist taper. But I don't think there was anyone really that close when you yeah. look at like, especially like in 93, you look at like my uh, my bicep to tricep ratio and then a tie in and then the small waist and uh, the cheekbones and the hip flexors and all that. <laughs> I don't. But don't you think it's crazy that in 93 to 9, in 30, almost That's 30 years, there's nobody that came close to you, Flex? I think that's the greatest honor that I have. Uh, yeah. that, that Milos, who was the closest to Flex Wheeler? Uh, Phil Heat, I would say, uh, and, but, but uh, digest this first. When you look pose by pose, you know, there is the many of those comparison shots. Then you can say, okay, there is an argument, you know, that uh, it can be compared. Uh, but uh, Phil didn't have the beauty of uh, of uh, Flex. uh, Flex's physique. Yeah. I mean, that's that just cartoonish thing. And I've seen this 1989 at the and California when he won as a light heavy, dominated. <laughs> and that was like, this is the best body I have ever seen. And mind you, uh, Lee Haney was guest posing at that show. Remember, Flex, you and I went to his uh, uh, seminar next day at the, at the Golds. I mean, uh, uh, listen, uh, Dennis, I, I, you, you met with Bill. It's just, it, you, it just, People forget there's a massive height difference, though. Yeah, and, and you compare that on stage, that spells different. Okay, kind of thing, you know what I mean. I mean the, then Sean Roden could be put in conversation, right? Again, uh, not your level. Yeah, he won the Olympia. You didn't win the Olympia, but still, uh, I, I hope. I think that we all agree. Listen, if you had a stride of glutes. <laughs> you you would be a uh, Olympia. Yeah. But listen, but listen. He had striated glutes in ninety three. He did have striated glutes. Ninety three. No, listen, listen. I didn't know how to pose them. Flex, let me talk. You, yeah. you. I I was there with you, so watching this shit on a daily basis, and then okay, like when you pull him back with the back. I I told you this before, but watching him doing these 
long pulley rope. Not- <laughs> you got a big old fan of striations coming across. Yep. We training for the same show. I'm I'm like, come on, flex, let's get get some more reps, all this shit. And then you got the the the, the thickness across the back. And then, you know, Phil Phil didn't have I understand what you're saying with Phil. It, it, a lot of different things you could say. He had a crazy back double bicep to the strider glutes. Flex did have strider glutes. He just got too heavy at later on. But when he was in those first years, man. 93, uh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, 93, I, I Mr. Remember, it, was me, it was me, you, and me, you, and Enrico. He was like, man. He was like, feel this, feel this. And his <laughs> I need, yeah, like, he made you, he made you touch never it. Had it before. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I, I, yeah, he had us all touch it. Feel my ass. Feel my, so we, 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 we there. It was that like, counter oh. It was at oh. the after, I, really, I really ran out into the audience, right? I ran out to the audience. Like, guys, feel this. Feel this. Feel this. Feel this. Mr. Olympia. No, not the Arnold, but the Mr. Olympia. And it was perfect camera. When you did that back, you put your arms back and the camera just focused on your back. That detail, I will never forget that. Not you guys even, know what I'm talking about? Death. Huh? Not even high death. Yeah. 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 No, I know, right? It wasn't even it, high death. Yeah. You got to hear All of our pictures, all of our pictures, like Dennis, uh, like um, what Milos was saying about you, man. Uh, me and you talk all the time. I tell you how much I hate you and why I hate you so damn much. <laughs> but um, just the craziest uh, shoulder to, to freaking uh, chest tie in with just straight. And we used to call them hangers, right? When hangers. Chest is hang- right here, we called them hangers. But it wasn't it wasn't even Tito back then, man. You're talking about freaking analog. You know what I mean? So you didn't even see the true definition of what any of us had. Chris, with your condition... You know, I got to see you, and even you, Milos, with your chest raises, you bastard, you and your freaking micro fi- uh, fibers in your goddamn quads. Everywhere. You only had to, you, you could only see that if you were there because yeah. the freaking analog photos didn't catch that, man. And a digital, I mean, the, the videos didn't catch that back then, you know? Yeah. And you still got people comparing us now. You diet down, train hard. And supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. To, with their digital age photos, you know, so it's just a, it's a <laughs> yeah. St- still waiting for Chris. Uh, okay, so I said Phil Heath and Sean Roden could compare, but I would give it to Flex all day long. Yeah, uh, Phil Heath didn't have a when you lift the arms and then your biceps, speaking biceps, hanging triceps, it's no comparison. Phil Heath has the arms uh, in a down position, right? You know, when he lifts them up, he loses. Uh, Sean Roden would uh, not have that back that you have and uh, arms that you have. But, you know, there is some similarities. I mean, uh, what about that I'm a fan of the sport. What? what about the ab and thigh? Flexes ab and thigh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but listen, Sean Roden had a good uh, ab and thigh, right? So it could be, it could be compared, you know, yeah, uh, to the ab. fairness. Nobody has a flexor shape, right? That, that's why there's still. Well, what about our boy from 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 England? Who? What was I saying? Uh, he was from Naba, and they brought him over. Oh, uh, the Charles Clement. Charles Clement. Yeah. That son of a gun was he was he was shocking to come out, and yeah. you know came in there nice and strong, and then you know he, he slowly faded out, you know later on. But he was he was shocking when he first came on. Yeah, he's beautiful physique. Yeah, but still. Can you compare on the merits of aesthetics here? Yeah. But there is one and one only Flex Wheeler look. And we all agree oh, this is the best physique of all time. Okay? Best physique. We would all think about it. Yeah. But Chris could beat him at 99 Olympia. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> okay. And and, and because shit. of uh, glutes and hamstrings, you know, this is why you lost the shows. If you had it, I mean, I just posted three days ago, Night of the Champions, 96, when you beat Ronnie. We did 96, Canada, Ronnie beats you, then we went to Florida, you beat him, and then you top it off with Night of the Champions, right? 
and Nano Champions conditioning was there, right? But yeah. many times in direct comparison, he turns around and there was a moment, I don't know what you were doing, when you backed off and you look at that. At, uh, oh, yeah, that was a mistake. That was the <laughs> stupidest movie that, that he's been <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let me see. I was so, like, yeah, yeah, that was a mistake. You should have. Yeah. like, oh shit. Yeah. That was an old shit moment. Oh, yeah. Shit. Ever since that, trust me, my thought was, oh my God. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. My yeah. thought was when I did that, right? When I did that, I looked. And what's like, so bad about it? You had your, your, your fingers in your trunk. <laughs> that made it worse. You're like, everybody look at my big ass. Mr. Ronnie what? did it fucking <laughs> when I, when I, halfway down his leg. <laughs> when I did that, my thought was, how do I pretend that I did that, that just didn't happen? Just, just, yeah, how did I pretend that I didn't make that effort? <laughs> right? I slowly tried to pull my underwear over my feet. <laughs> hey, that, I heard that commercial. Want to get away? <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, uh, but but yeah, so uh, Chris, so who is your pick for comparison to Flex? Closest. Chris to oh. go. Oh. Claremont. That's why I, I have to say Claremont. Yeah. But but listen, here's the thing. For to 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 compare that with Flex, Flex, like when you go to compete, there's there's the young bulls. There's a seasoned vet and there's the old heads. So depending on what year you're talking, like it took me some time because I, I didn't have a maturity to challenge flex early on. It, it took me a few years for my body to mature up into a certain look. So it just all depends. Like I just think I don't think no one, no one from that era of, but it was a different look. It was like like like. Uh, no one in that 92, 93, 92, 93, and then he struck it again. 90 was it 97 Arnold uh, Flex? Uh, 98, 98 Arnold. Yeah, and I was in your room, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. those times and those times, that's when I could say right here, right now, this is the best physique ever, or I've never seen a physique like this. You know, not Lee Haney, not, you know, Lee Haney had a different look, you know, but I, you know, I don't like to, Lee Haney's like my uh, idol. To yeah. all of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I don't like to I don't like to compare nobody to him, but He's outside of that, I, I mean, just seeing close up, I never seen anyone that aesthetically pleasing, and the 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 bells and the whistles and everything that going on with it. But I like I said, I've told you these things many times, but that for sure, I, I can't I can't compare someone to that ninety three look. No, and that's the one thing I knew about you, Chris, is um, I knew you know, like you said, it was hard competing, it was hard training with each other because we honestly. We purely did push each other and want the best for each other. I just didn't want you to have the best over me. You would and, think doing the same exercises, I could look like you, but it yeah. don't look that way, did it? The only, that's the only <laughs> thing I had over you it was time. I knew I was a little bit more mature than you, and I yes. knew that you had wider clavicles. Even me and Dennis were talking about this. You had wider clavicles than me. You had a wider chest cavity than me, and I yes. knew it would take you a little bit longer to it fill that up. Yeah. I had to have... I actually have a very na narrow clavicles and uh, a very narrow chest, so it it looked it looks rounder. Uh, right. That's the reason it looks rounder. So I knew I had that, but I mean, in all honesty, um, there is there's actually shots of us uh, in '99 on Olympia because we both wore yellow. That I would have to do a double take to make sure who I was looking at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brother. Yeah, we had yeah. some nice shots there. Nice I, I, I thought I thought you had a blue posing trunks. When you were looking at uh, Ronnie's ass and then uh, <laughs> pull it back on the, you know, to my recollection. But listen, we all agree hey, 93 on the classic. Yeah. Huh? I still, to this moment right now, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> you were being cocky. That's what you thought. You, thought you, you believe you're on press at that point. No, I didn't hey. believe more. Yeah, that, believe that was maybe. That, that was maybe. That was deciding moment of the Olympia. <laughs> that, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know the judges are watching this too, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, but uh, 93. Uh, Dennis, you agree? Uh, most of us, 93, Flex Villarano Classic, greatest condition, greatest physique of all time, right? What he just mentioned right now, he had a narrow clavicles, right? I think in 93, it was a little bit apparent, right? 
that you didn't have all this wow, yeah. right? But yeah. so when I ask you, what is your best? And I, I don't know if you remember, I asked you 93 Arnold Classic or 99 British uh, Grand Prix. You said British. British Grand Prix. Yes. And the reason why is because, um, like you just said, I, I, I was able to put on a little bit more mass to hide my narrowness. And it's not only about condition. How did you, right? how, how did you put that mass on? Just time after time after mm. time. I don't want to steal your saying, but time under pressure is truly it, man. I mean, it, you know, it, it takes it takes it takes a thousand steps to get to a thousand steps. You can't cheat it. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but uh, um, that's that's the only difference and the reason why condition wise. No, I would I wouldn't beat myself in ninety nine uh, from ninety three. I'd win in condition. But it's not just a condition show, nor is it yeah. just a thirty show. And that's why I say overall, everything, I would eclipse myself uh, from 93 because I was just too small of a version of myself. Uh, that's why I say 93. And 93, I actually had better striated glutes than all my other shows except 90, uh, 98, uh, 99 um, don't, don't, was better than uh, all the other years except the 93. Yeah, don't you guys agree, like, certain certain amount of water content in the muscle, certain, certain fullness, all that can play – a lot in your physique. I know I had, I brought a physique that was not even the biggest show. It was like in Australia, 2000 something, uh, forgot exactly the word, uh, the, the, the number, but that was like one of my best looks I ever had. And I was like, damn, like, I wish I could have had that at the Olympia or something like that, or at the Arnold or whatever. But yeah, I think being, you could be shredded certain times at certain ages, there's certain looks even throughout the year. Like sometimes you could nail a certain look just by having more yeah. water, more fullness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I the really, flex. honestly, the, 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 the mind, I really honestly, now I understand that uh, my kidneys were just failing and I just couldn't contend because I had to use, I had to use way more diuretics than I ever did as I, as I got older. Um, I had to use more stuff than I ever did. And now looking back, um, I, because even in, and most people don't know it, but I think only Rico and Chris, um, and uh, and uh, Rico's ex-wife only knew um, in ninety um, in um, two thousand two. I was immediately rushed to the hospital after the Olympia um, because I uh, had uh, renal failure. Um, they rushed me. Actually, I'll tell the story now. Um, you know, Ron. Uh, you know, uh, Robin was still my manager then, and we didn't want everybody to know. So they literally wheeled me out on a gurney and had the whole sheets covered me up like I passed away, so that. People didn't know it was really me under the gurney, but I, I, they had to go into my groin and into my neck and dialysize me, and I didn't really use anything at all uh, for the Olympia, and that was my my poor decision in going full board the following year because I'm like, if this happens to me and I barely used anything at all, why, that why was, should I even? But I, wasn't that the year that you said you were <laughs> natural, 2002? Yeah. I was natural, and and, and uh, Milos knew what I did and everything like that. And I don't. I don't. Why is he that. laughing now, Milos? Why are you laughing? Because he <laughs> always let, let you say it like the candidate to Canary. So, so <laughs> I was. The truth is, I was, I was suffering renal failure uh, when I when I did that show, and because of renal failure, I was allowed to use Deca. Deca is one of the drugs that helps save your kidneys when you're going through renal failure. So I was I was using um, Deca. And I was using uh, one IU or GH, but still, if you want to compare that to what everybody else uses, so when you I, when I, you I, have I, bad kidneys, Deca is good for you. Is that what you're saying? Deca, Deca was created for renal failure. One of the reasons why it was created. Minos, did you know that? No, no, I didn't. No, no, really. Look, it's interesting. Yeah, you but, can look at. But, but here, here, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Flex, you know, this kind of podcast and we talking real shit is what people appreciate. Yeah. So. I have to say the story anyway, because uh, yeah. you just mentioned it. Uh, 2003, yeah, I'm preparing a flex for uh, Ironman. And I said this story many times. I have never in my life seen somebody transforming in a minute. In a one hour, he is completely different. Next day, he's like, oh, my God, Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, if you remember, Flex, you came to seminar of me and, uh, and uh, Sean Ray in uh, Fullerton. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't expect you. And they said, okay, guys. I need you to help me. I want to compete an Arnold Classic, right? Yeah, I and remember. I, you Arnold guys, Classic was you five at, weeks, right? You laughed at me, Milos, and you called me skinny fat. <laughs> yeah, you were. So, so here, here's a... Yeah, listen, listen. This is after 2002. He was uh, 
competing at Olympia drug free. Now he had his problems, right? The medical. And then you showed up in, that was January 17th, my birthday, actually. Yeah. Five weeks yeah. before the first weekend in March, I'm a classic, right? Five weeks. And yeah. then you, you, you go, okay, I want to compete. So Sean says, okay, let, let's see what you look like. And when you strip off, Sean starts laughing, dying laughing. I said, what the, like, how are you going to compete, right? And I said, okay, let's do it. You competed in a matter of three weeks. You entered. Big Rami. Uh, uh, is Big Rami there? Yeah, yeah, right here. Big Rami. What up, bro? Oh, okay, I'll stop the story. <laughs> hey guys, Wait. I'm gonna go ahead and go. I got a doctor walked in. Uh, so, uh, we we just uh, we just filming our podcast. Yeah. Guys, all right. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> all right. Go ahead and tell the story. Hold on. Hold, hold on one second. Flex, are you got to go? Yeah, I got to go. Brother, we appreciate you, man. Get better yeah. quick, and man, and come on Thank home. You, all right. We Thank need you out here. Bye bye. Okay, okay right. Flex. But is Rami there? Yeah, Rami is right here. He's, hey, this Rami. is his little girl. I do. Damn. Good to see you. It's this little girl is on the phone. She yeah. wants to say. You, ne <laughs> you never know who's going to drop in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the podcast. Rami, I'll call you right back, okay, when I'm done. Okay. okay brother. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I, I just have to finish this story because. Uh, Go ahead. I was going to say it in front of Flex, but now he's maybe it's not going to sound too good. But listen. Uh, what did he say? If you if you guys catch, because of his kidneys, he had to uh, use more diuretics, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm preparing him for this Iron Man uh, that we didn't plan, but he's okay. Let's just do it. Okay, so we're gonna do it two weeks before Arnold Classic. Let's say so we did a little bit of depression, and then we're gonna be doing a little loading. So I gave him normal Dactone last three days. You know how we always did, and Friday is supposed to be a little bit of diazide, but his wife calls me, so you, you got to come, he's, he's locked up. I told you the story. Uh, so I, I tell to the others. So I'm driving there, you know, shit, right? and he is locked up completely, can you know. Cramping. Uh, can walk. So I say, okay, what did he do? Oh, well, because uh, his kidneys are not functioning properly, I guess, with Chad, he used to do much, much more. So... At that time, he did four of the diazides on top of Aldactone, right? And he completely locked up. And you guys know that uh, right after the uh, Ironman, before the Arnold Classic, it's when he was rushed to the hospital and, and all that stuff. So that mentality, right? My uh, my uh, kidney does not work properly, so let me just take more. In case any of the guys competing, listening, that had the same issue, don't do it, mm -hmm. okay, which is super, super important for me to express. I wanted to say this in front of Flex as he mentioned it, but uh, so he kind of feel guilty saying it behind his back, but that was the case, Yeah. right? Yeah. So, and maybe <clears throat> some of, because I had a guys that would regularly take eight diazides a day, I say, excuse me? Wait a minute, eight a day? A day, a day. okay. I, I don't want to mention the names. Okay. <laughs> but uh, here, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be oh, good. Man, man. Man. Because because <laughs> oh, this guy God. also uh, a few years back he says, okay guys, uh, uh, I'm gonna say something about a coach. I'm not gonna say his name, but he prepared uh, Dennis Wolf and he is known for insulin. I'm not gonna say the name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see who so, could, who could that be. Uh, so that that's the guy. Okay, that's the guy that was talking about it. Who, who was because I gave him a little bit of diazide, right? And on this first show, he didn't look as dry, but the similars, you know, I would normally take eight. I so said, eight what? <laughs> eight. What's the max? Diazide. What's the max you would you would let somebody take? The max, even though he's still watery. What's the max? Just two? for people to listen, what what you think the max should be? Yeah, two to its tops. And A this day. Is like yeah. Two stops. For how many like, days? For how many days can somebody do that? I mean, day before. The day before. And maybe no. morning up. Because why would you want to be dry on Thursday? Right. No, I mean, because uh, you know, you know, some people, they start that shit like uh, three, four days before the show. Month, Dennis. Yeah. I know that in many countries, they start taking a diuretics every single day, month before the show. 
for the love of God. Do they have, and, do they have quinine sulfate anymore? No. They do. They do actually. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Not oh yeah. Okay, oh yeah, you know about quinine sulfate. Okay, yes, that's available. But what about um, cider, cider drink? Oh, that was wrong, right? Yeah, I think in some countries. Listen, uh, it was called Mamomit, M A M O I T, Orimitan. Orimitan, uh, yes. Some European countries. Orimitan is discontinued, but then there was uh, Mamomit in some countries. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, uh, I had I had a, I had a doctor in in Italy make them a chemist make them okay. for me you know but that that it's, doctor he's I'm in the he's, time he's I dead too he died and I always had them you know you know how many friends I had before the Olympia shit you'd be surprised <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know if it's available right no it's not available it's not available. Mm. It's not available, but that that was something that I've never knew. But when you know, when I started working out and competing, being in Europe until I came to the U.S. and I and I heard from you guys that that was a thing. I didn't know. I didn't know that was. I didn't know what the hell. That was a thing. Yeah, <laughs> cider drink. I remember the Paul Dillette was the first one who told me about it. He said, "Oh yeah, whoa, that shit wraps the skin around my fucking legs." <laughs> <laughs> it was That's crazy. Like hey, do 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 you guys remember? Uh, Percuta uh, cream. Percuta cream. cream, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Hell yeah, I had boxes of that shit. <laughs> oh, really? Make the skin look like glass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dude, I was just rubbing it I mean, on my eyes. They have come in a, What's a, them, a, them ampules, like a, right? Like them alcohol. ampules, yeah. Percuta cream, man. And and, and, uh, and we had we had Tricana cream. Tricana cream. Yeah. Tricana cream, man. That was another one that was like, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. But the Percuta way. cream, actually, Percuta cream is... Uh, Tyroxin T4, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, but it was, uh, you rub into the skin. I know that Paul Dillat was uh, taking a bath with it. I mean, uh, the, oh, literally yeah. speaking, right? You know, now, nowadays, when I, when I mention people, oh, what the hell was that? But that Triacana cream, uh, uh, then it's, uh, I tell you, Genrico, right? Genrico made that uh, Triacana cream in the Italian pharmacy. And there was a, uh, Ten percent. It was probably now, the same. It was probably the same chemist who did the cider drink for us. Okay, probably, yeah, probably. Yeah. But listen, so it's two thousand three. Okay, and when we talk about special invitation for the Olympia and shit like this, uh, you know, uh, I, I couldn't compete two thousand two because uh, remember I, I tore my quadricep, and I was uh, qualified for two thousand Olympia, right? Uh, but I didn't compete because they didn't give me medical clearance and all this shit. So. At that time, one guy could be invited. So I was going to ask for invitation, but Sean Ray said that he's going to ask for that invitation. So as we are training, we just finished training with Flex Wheeler 2003 for the Ironman. So I'm still training with Sean. I said, God damn, they're going to give it to him. They're not going to give it to me. So let me just do the Night of the Champions 2003. And now, you know, I, I never had a super lean back or like Chris Premier fucking serrations everywhere. So I, I need that, and Jericho told me he has this cream. I said, okay, you know, get it for me. So he gave me 100 grams, okay? 100 grams, 10%, that is a 10 grams, okay? 10 grams is 10,000 milligrams, mm -hmm. right? Multiplied by 1,000, it's what, the 1 million micrograms? You know, shit. So <laughs> one uh, T3 tablet is 25 micrograms, right? right? This was like one million. So I started doing it, and I told my ex because I needed another. Oh, you again. rubbed the whole cream on your back, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> listen, listen. I mean, I didn't know. You know, she's supposed to do just a little bit, and the first day, second day, third day. I mean, I feel like, day. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. so like, I, and I don't look after seven days. <laughs> it's okay, you know. There's After no seven cream. days, you were see-through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in, in seven <laughs> days, because she took this as a moisturizer, right? right? <laughs> and all over my, and I knew it, obviously, man, I used a million micrograms in seven days. My thyroid was fucking through the roof. <laughs> thyroid, thyroid break dancing in your throat. Yeah, Jesus Christ. But, but now that you mentioned it, I have to say that story. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Now let's let's wrap this up with uh, one last thing. Who's going to Tampa? 
Well, I'm not going to be there, but uh, because you work with the, you know, Joe Mackey, I don't know if you've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe, I saw. Joe, yeah, Joe I saw. just contacted me, right? And he wanted to, he flew in the day before yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He came here to see me, right? And the same thing, he's going to do the Texas. And he's going to do him. Tampa too, right? No, yeah. Because I'm the same like you. It's a week earlier. Why won't you do it? Right. Okay. So, so are you coming to Tem- are you coming to Tampa? I, I can't because I have to be here then that day. Why you have to yeah. be here? You got to go to a fucking apex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over <August> six. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, how should I politely say it? But come on, man. You know, I got to be in anyway. Tampa because I'm MC in Tampa. Tim ha- asked oh, yeah. me to MC the show for him. It's who, three- who is doing it? I may be going to Tampa. Yeah. Who, who uh, is doing it? I, I don't know. The, li- the lineup is not out yet. Um, uh, from Canada. Uh, what? Clinton. The Beast. Ian. Oh, Clinton is doing it? Yeah. yeah. What are you what talking about? Who? Oh, Quint. Oh, yeah, Quinton East. Uh, East. East. What is it? Quinton Eastwood. Eastwood. Yeah. Yeah. Nice physique, Sorry. man. Nice physique. physique. Yeah. I think Tampa going to be stacked. I don't know the lineup yet. It hasn't. It hasn't been uh, published. But I, should, I think in the I next day or there, two. Brother. Yeah. Come on out. I leave uh, Wednesday night. I get. I get there Wednesday night, because we got the Masters on Thursday. And then Friday and Saturday, so I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be probably out. I don't even know how I'm gonna do this. I'm not used to it, but I'm gonna be doing three days of MCing for Tim and uh, you know read some names. I'm gonna call Tim today. I'm gonna see what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah come yeah, on out. I'm sure Tim has a pay per view too. Yeah, call Tim and say put it. you on the put you on the cast. No, he said he wanted me to, but let's, there you go. I, there you go. Know, but let's let's pull the trigger. Is this a master show too? Uh, Masters on Thursday, yes. But masters, what over forty, over fifty, or what? I, I don't know. But I, I don't, why would they do masters of different age category? Why is just one master? Listen, I, I did you see? Man. Did you see the masters nationals? I mean, the world championships. Rusty Jeffers won the over forty because he, he did lose the third in the over fifty and got third in the over fifty. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let, let me just—that's crazy. Just what does that tell you? The older you get, the better you get. Yeah, but the guy, really, really <laughs> Stalin, right? Really Stalin could enter over 40 also because he's he over could 50. have, yeah. But he did. I don't know and why. He looked right? unbelievable, I, man. He looked bet, really, really I good. Bet, Dennis, I bet if you hired me and Milos to train you, oh fuck you guys, we could bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, 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 but back, point. Dude. Come on, there ain't no money in the world. It would be the best be. look ever. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be that stupid. We gotta go. Yeah, listen, <laughs> I, I want to make this point. What? Do you know there was a Masters over 60? Yeah, 80. Master over 70? And 80. Over 80. Yeah, and there was one guy in the over 80s, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. should not Good. be allowed. Yeah. That should not be allowed. I mean, again, I speak my mind. Yeah. I mean, we talk about the dangers and all because I'm here, uh, somebody's commentating something on a next year. And then I have a guy, he's 60 plus, and he wants to do a little bit of uh, GH and test and uh, DECA and uh, EQ and uh, Anavar and that, uh, over 60 years old. Yeah. But he wants to keep healthy, but he still also want to win the show. You're over 60. You shouldn't be doing this shit. Do you tell him that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I, I would do the same. I said, listen, what are you doing? What, what, what are you trying to prove here? Yeah, you know. but uh, after I've seen that, uh, this is over sixty. It's already. I mean, I'm almost sixty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but would you? Would you? Would Are you, you step? 60? Would you? Yeah, no, nah, it's fifty. It's I'm fifty-eight. Be Fifty-nine in January. Right? Yeah, let's, hey, you can go to Denny's and get a great discount. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got it. <laughs> hey, did I? Did I guys? Did I ever tell you what I'm happened? About to do it. Did I'm I tell you? Hey, five. did I I'm tell you what happened? The 19th of listen, August. listen to I'm gonna this. Get my shit. Listen, I'm listen to what happened to me. I go to Fry's. I go to Fry's. This is my shop where I, my my store where I do my grocery shopping. I go to the damn cashier register. I put all that stuff on that thing, 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 thing. All of a sudden, bing, 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 bing. Senior discount. Ten <laughs> percent senior yeah, discount. Man, get that shit. I was like, I'm about to get mine. I'm <laughs> going to do it as I can. 
I got a 10% senior discount. I was like, I don't know if I should be happy or fucking sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for revealing to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, guys, well, listen. Yeah. Go ahead, Milos, whatever you wanted to say. No, I mean... Uh, uh, I'll let you wrap it up today. I, I don't know how... I really uh, logged in at uh, 1100. You guys were talking, and I, I didn't catch that when the Flex was saying how serious this is, because uh, I, I, I missed that first part. Did he say now that he, he's not here? Did he say that the uh, doctor gave him five years or what? No, 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 no. He no, said, thank God. No, no, no. He said uh, they're going to do a biopsy, a kidney biopsy to see because uh, his, 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 his kidney is failing. And uh, I, I, I didn't know that you need a bi- I didn't know yeah, you need right. a biopsy to see that a kidney is failing. I thought the numbers would tell you that. But uh, uh, for whatever reason, you know, I mean, I guess, I don't know, maybe worst case scenario, if it's the truth, then he needs to probably get back on dialysis. He looked good today. Yeah, right. he, he looks good. He, he looks good. Very strong. His voice was strong, and yeah. I was no, I was no. I t- and I talked. I talked to him two days ago, and I had him on my live on Sunday. So he, you know, he's, he's looked and he sounded good. But you know, l- listen. Not because you know, not everybody who looks good, you know, is 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 is, is healthy. I know. You I saw know, what I just know. happened with um, what's his name? Who just died this weekend. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Jerry Ward. Yes, oh Jerry. God. Yes. And you know, supposedly I, I he was a good spirit. He was looking good. And the next thing you know, he doesn't wake up. Time is I, up. I did a, two weeks ago, I did the podcast with him. Yeah. Because he, he I, don't, I don't know if you catch that. Uh, first video he did, and, and that is your familiar. He had like a 10 uh, pieces of paper. Miller's plan. Yeah. I, I faxed this to somebody. And some of my athletes gave it to him. So he is reading exact dosages, right? And so, oh, Miller's was not lying. Dosages that we recommend, low dosages that we were doing, mm. right? So after this, he he called me and he says, "Hey, would you mind doing another like interview with me so we can warn these guys that these ridiculous amounts are dangerous?" So I did that. I mean, it's it's on uh, his uh, YouTube channel and I posted on mine, mm. you know, to warn people about it. And then uh, I, I got the news that uh, yeah. this is what I, I don't know if it's a heart attack or what. Yeah, we don't know. Nobody knows, I guess. But, I, I, you know, if you don't wake up, what, what else could it be than heart related? Yeah. But or, what, what a know. guy. Yeah. And he was really. It's, unfor- uh, it's unfortunate that this keeps happening, you know, and that, that tells me every day that, you know, we're, yeah, in, we're in this, this age is, group people, where people, people, people around us. Yeah. There's people on Instagram, this guy the other day, and I, and I got on there and I said, dude, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He's like giving people advice, like if you want to be a good pro nowadays, uh, you know, you got to take a, a gram and a half to two bottles of this and that. I'm mm. like, dude, that is not the way yeah. you body build. Yeah. I yeah. know. Unfortunately, we will never, we will never be able to stop said, everybody. But the, the said, ones who are serious, he, maybe listen to, to what, you know, what some of us have like to he's, say. And he's telling people like, that's the way you, the pros are taking us and, and but the other side, the downside is that you only have a certain amount of time to live. Like, dude, what the yeah. fuck are you even saying? It's probably like, a steroid dealer that's trying to sell his shit. That's why they tell him about them crazy doses. They want to make that some is money. Not the way you bodybuild, dog. But I get again, guys. Thanks, thanks. I appreciate you guys for like every week. Right. Thanks for coming on. And uh, Milos, nice, Milos, nice maybe you can give those seats away for uh, September, uh, um, July, Next. now August sixth, and come to Tampa. Take care, of your athlete. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know the last time I was in Tampa, yeah. Yeah. But but listen. Uh, Chris, you know Vince Taylor, right? Yeah. We would like to see Vince Taylor on, uh, on the podcast. Maybe I would. I, 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 I asked him to come on. but I, 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 I know, don't. but uh, maybe Chris can convince him. I still got his photo up right over here. Yeah. Yeah, Vince, I mean, uh, really. Yeah. Uh, Vince, we would love to see you here. You're the legend. We, we did so many goddamn European Grand Prix tours. Uh, I'm sure he could, we can. He could talk. He could talk about his company and shit too. Right. Yeah, right. but uh, but we have a stories. Yeah. Everybody wants to hear the stories. Yeah, Chris, send him a message. Maybe maybe he changed his mind. Sure. All right. I'll, I'll speak German to him. The only German words I know <laughs> is uh, Scheiße and Sprechen Sie Deutsch. <laughs> helpless, helpless. I, I have a very, I have a very juicy German joke, but I can't say it because it's over the top. Oh, okay, Chris. You guys Chris, call Tim. Try to set up so yeah, will, so we sure. see you in Tampa. All right, okay. Milos. Milos, I still have faith and hope that yeah, I'll see you in Tampa also. 
<laughs> by the way, it's going to be. By the way, I'm looking forward to the great card this weekend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. But I forgot it's a, it's the USA uh, Chris, this weekend. Why you're coming? Yeah, the USA, yeah. This weekend, guys, guys, and that's why I say I gotta come see you. Oh shit! Yeah, I forgot. I'm gonna hit you up when I. I'm gonna hit you up uh, at least tomorrow or the next day. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm here. All right, guys. Okay, guys. I'll see you guys uh, next, week. next week. Take care. Okay, God bless you. Bye bye.